we're going to introduce uh, one of the writers whose uh, work has been adapted, and the film will be in the first half. So um, uh, if you would welcome to this stage Ivan Coyote, please. You'll have to watch out for that, my mother had stated. You're gonna have to watch out for that. Maybe we should get the one piece. But all they have left is yellow and orange, and you don't like yellow either, do you? Uh, the filmmaker's name is Claudia Morgado Escanilla. She's a Chilean Canadian filmmaker who lives in Vancouver. In 1998, I think it was, we were employed, gainfully employed, both of us, on a really cheesy television series called The New Adams Family. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, she was a script supervisor and I was the props guy. And um, that was when one of my first books came out uh, called Boys Like Her. And she read uh, the short story, No Bikini, at that time and said, I'd really like to make that into a film. And because I was hanging on a, 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 a lot of film sets, I had learned by that point uh, about how much weight to give <laughs> filmmakers mm -hmm. when they talk about what they were going to do, um, which is about as much weight as like when a schizophrenic guy's talking on the sidewalk. It's pretty much the same. <laughs> and, um, and so I said, yeah, sure, you should do that. <laughs> and, uh, and she did. She went and got the funding together and got quite a large crew together and made really a beautiful film that I really can't take any credit for at all, except for that I wrote the sh story that the screenplay was based on and we kind of co-wrote the script as much as we co-write with Claudia. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and um, then I did the voiceover. But, there, yeah. but I didn't go, I was never on set. Um, and to me, as you'll see when the film screens, it was all about casting. It was that simple. Mrs. Delaware. Yes. We all loved and feared her. She was a human bullhorn bellowing all her instructions to us. Yes. <laughs> Hello, my little guppies. I didn't see any of the rough edits, really. Um, I, I, the first time I saw the film was um, in studio when I went in to go do the, the voiceover for the narrative. I was wearing this um, dark blue dress shirt with it kind of wasn't really pinstripes. It was just like thin stripes and a sky blue tie that highlighted the secondary tones of my dress shirt. <laughs> and the waitress, she liked my shtick and so she kept she kept feeding me free drinks after my set was over, and I had like, oh, I don't know, three or four healthy belts of the Irish in me, hey? When this uh, gigantic man in a Flames jersey grabbed me by the necktie, hauled my face right up into his chest hair. Oh. I know. <laughs> but I'm intrigued by the designation storyteller. Mm. How long have you been saying that, storyteller? Um, a long time. Yeah? Yep. Um, Mostly because I, I uh, do a lot of live performance and I don't want to be called a spoken word artist. Yes. <laughs> People For, don't like that spoken word artist. The designation. Um, I don't like a lot of spoken word. Uh, would be more... Uh, and I don't want to be... Uh, and I think that's pretty much what I'm doing. Well, I mean, I wrote one, the one novel and I'm working on another novel, but you know, I, I've written five collections of short stories. And, um, and I do a lot, uh, they make the bulk of my living from live performance. When I first got to Ottawa, I made the mistake of uh, stumbling into this uh, fancy high-end salon in the middle of gay town. Uh, my bangs were in my eyes, I couldn't see my ears, I was desperate. Eighty dollars. Eighty dollars plus tip and a disturbingly sensual rosemary and mint infused scalp massage later, okay? I stumbled back out onto Bank Street with a slightly more effeminate version of the haircut I had walked in there with. Approximately three and one half millimeters shorter than the one I'd woken up with that morning. I'm trying to shy away from the bars. I don't do, I do the, a lot of festivals. I do uh, story t writers' festivals, storytelling festivals, spoken word festivals, poetry festivals, music festivals, 
some performance art festivals even, okay. although I shy away from that because you get mud all over yourself and blood and <laughs> you know, jello and stuff like that. It's awful. I'm talking about how I cannot stand to drive around in my truck with less than half a tank of gas in it because you never know. <laughs> how I hate cheap tools and dull knives and loose screws. I hate them. How I own 30 pairs of the exact same kind of underwear. 